This video, we're going to continue with factoring, but now we're going to go over trinomials, ones that have no number in front and then ones that do. And just always keep in mind, no matter what type of problem you have, when you're asked to factor, you want to look for a greatest common factor first. So in number one, um, not all of them have numbers, so I can't factor out a number, and not all of them have eight. So there is no GCF, so I'm going to use my other method, which is factoring trinomials. And when you do that, you always multiply the first number times the last. So 1 times negative 18 is negative 18. And now I'm going to set up my blanks. My second blank, I always use that middle number. Now I'm going to make a list of numbers that multiplies to 18. I won't worry till the negative, or sorry, about the negative till the end. Now I'm going to check which of those adds or subtracts to give us 7. So 2 and 9, if we subtract, we get 7. And then I'm going to want the 2 to be negative because negative 2 times 9 is negative 18 and negative 2 plus 9 is 7. So I'm ready to write down my factors. Since this started with 1a squared, my factors are both going to start with a. And then I'll put the negative 2 and the positive 9. And those are our factors for this problem. On question 2, I'm going to multiply the 1 times the 36. That's just 36. And now I'll set up my blanks. My middle number always goes on that bottom blank. So we can make a list of numbers that multiplies to give us 36. And once you have your list, you're going to want to check which of those will give you the 12. So I know 6 and 6 adds up to 12. So I'm going to fill those in here. And then now I worry about what's negative. Well, if I only make one of them negative, then they'll add up to zero. I'm going to have to make both of them negative so that they'll add up to negative 12. And then when you multiply two negatives, you get that positive 36. Since our, fact, our expression started with d squared, I'm going to start each factor with d. And then I'm going to put the minus 6 in each one. And these are my factors. Now... Um, sometimes you're going to have trinomials where the a is greater than 1. So where the number um, in front of the squared is bigger than 1. Um, your process will still be the same, but very important, especially with these, that you look for a greatest common factor first before you do anything else. So if you look at problem 1, this one, if you notice, does have a greatest factor. All of these are divisible by 3. So I can actually factor out a 3 at the beginning of the problem. So then I'm going to get x squared plus 4x minus 12. So that 3 is removed. Let's ignore it for now. But in the middle, I still have a trinomial. And I want to factor that trinomial. So I'm going to use the method we used in the other problems. So here, I'm going to do 1 times negative 12. And that gives me negative 12. So that's going to be my first one. And then my middle number goes on the bottom. So I'll make a list of numbers that multiplies to 12. I want to see which one gives me 4. That would be 2 and 6. And if I want positive 4, the 2 is going to be the negative 1. So um, that 3 is still going to be separate. But for this trinomial here, I can set up factors now. So since it starts with x squared, I'm going to start each one with x. x times x is x squared. And now I can put my minus 2 and my positive 6. So these are the three factors um, for our expression. So again, always check if there's a greatest common factor first. And number 2, I'm checking for a greatest common factor, but 15, 14, and 8 don't have one. So this one, I'm going to proceed to my next steps for trinomials. So I'm going to do 15 times negative 8. That comes out to negative 120. So now I can set up my blanks. I'm going to make a list of numbers that multiplies to 120. And I believe we can also do 10 times 12. 
So now we're going to see which of these adds up to 14 or subtracts to get 14. That would be um, 6 and 20. And then since I want positive 14, the 6 is going to be negative. Now here, when we're writing our answer, it's going to be a little different. Um, so you'll see why. This time it started with 15a squared. So when I set up my factors, I'm actually going to start each one with 15a, which doesn't make sense yet because 15 times 15 um, is not going to give us 15a squared. But we're going to fix that at the end with an extra step. So I'm going to put my minus 6 and my positive 20. Again, it doesn't make sense yet. If you were to multiply these, you wouldn't get what we started with. So what you're going to do now is actually divide out a greatest common factor. This one, both 15 and 6, can be divided by 3. So if you do that, you end up with 5a minus 2. This one, 15 and 20, can be divided by 5. You do that, you end up with 3a plus 4. So these are your factors, and now it makes sense. 5a times 3a is 15a squared, 2 and 4 is 8. So now it looks like this would multiply out to give us what we started with.